Hi and welcome to the fourth RoboCup Humanoid League Spotlight video. Apologies in advance for the worst audio and video quality. This week we'll be back to normal quality next week. But we do have a lot to talk about today, so let's start with the updated rule document. We have released the third update of the rule book last week, and there were three main changes made to this. First of all, we updated the forceful contact detection. You see here that this has been updated quite a lot. So instead of just a few lines of text, we now have an entire decision tree. This may look much more complicated, but it actually hopefully makes it much easier to understand. It basically still covers the same rules that you're used to from the physical competition. We still have a protection or good protection of the goalkeeper in its own goal area. And we have a different penalty or a different um, criteria we apply depending on whether the forceful contact happened in close proximity around the ball or further away from the ball. And with the decision tree, it's hopefully very easy now for teams to understand and also for the automatic referee system to apply the forceful contact rules. And we hope that by the implementation of the rules, we both manage to not over penalize teams, so to not have all robots penalized or free kicks being called all the time because forceful contact is called too often, but still protect especially smaller robots when they are playing against larger robots. The second change we made is the reintroduction of the drop ball. Initially, we planned to remove the drop ball for the virtual competition. However, just to make sure that we will not have entire games where the ball is basically getting stuck in the beginning of the game and the robots can't find them for the remaining half time, we now reintroduce the drop ball if there is no interaction with the ball for at least two minutes in the game. And the last update that we made concerns the ball handling, which means touching the ball with the hands or the arm of the player. Instead of penalizing robots with a free kick if this happens, players are now penalized with a removal penalty. And this is to ensure that we still introduce a penalty to not encourage players to play with their hand on purpose. However, if a robot falls on a ball or lays on the ground and the ball is shot against the hand or arm, we also don't want to call free kicks too often. So now we decided to move to a removal penalty in this case. You can still comment on the rules if you see any issues with the current version of the rules. You can still bring this to the forum. We aim to release the final version of the rules with hopefully only minor changes applied on April 19th. We have also updated the robot model specifications. So if you want to play with your own robot model, just as a reminder, you need to submit this by April 23rd. And the updated robot model specifications now contain more details on the regulations, but also some recommendations on how you can prepare your own robot model for the submission. You can also have a look at the Darwin OP robot model that was released by Cyberbotics for some inspiration and how to model certain parts, for example, like the backlash. The next and hopefully final update to this document is planned for April 12th. And in this update, we would give you more details on what exact files you need to submit on April 23rd and what we as a technical committee will look for in those files and also how the other team members or members from other teams who are reviewing your robot model, what they will be asked to look for so you can prepare optimally for this submission. The third update that we made is for the API that regulates the communication between the robot model on a simulated field and the robot control software developed by the teams. This API is handling both the sensor readings made by the virtual robot model and how this is sent back to the robot control software. And it also handles how the robot control software can send motor commands back to the robot models on the field. This file has been updated now and is also in accordance to the first release made by Cyberbotics on their repository. So in this, you'll find now a first implementation that handles this communication 
which is based on Protobuf 3. There are still some details in this document that we can not commit to yet, and this mostly relates to the update frequency of the sensor readings and bandwidth limitations. We are currently still in the process of deciding where exactly we'll host the tournament, and based on that decision, there will be some adaptations necessary to the bandwidth and also the, the update frequency we can commit to. We are currently testing different implementations for this, and in the next update on April 19th, um, to this document, we hope to be able to include more details on exactly this bandwidth and the sensor reading frequency. We have also released a new document that concerns the server infrastructure specifications. As I said earlier, we are still in the process of deciding where exactly to host, and we are currently exploring different options simultaneously. However, there are already a number of things that we can commit to, no matter where exactly we'll be hosting. So most importantly, in this new document that we have released, you will find that we have committed to using Docker images for the robot control software. So we expect teams to submit Docker images with their software for the tournament. And that there will also be the possibility for teams to submit different Docker images depending on the robot model they are playing with. So in addition to those Docker images, there's going to be a file that is a config file that lists all the robots that you want to play with. So a maximum of two for adult size or four for kid size. And for each of those robots, you would specify both what robot model you want to play with and also what Docker image you want to play with. The document about the server specifications released is also giving you some indications of how you'll be able to write custom log files for your robot control software and how you'll get access to this throughout the tournament. The next update to this document is also planned on April 19th, and by then we aim to have made the final decision where exactly to host the tournament. So we hope to be able to provide more details exactly on the computation specifications for the instances running the robot control software in this updated document. With the submission deadline getting closer, we also know that many teams are now finalizing their robot models. And while there's a lot of things going on in the organization, we would also like to give visibility to the teams and their developments and their robot models that they are um, already providing. So we are working on creating an overview website on our RoboCup Humanoid website that lists all the robot models that are already freely available for you to look at and also other developments, software developments or other tools that teams develop that could help the virtual uh, competition. In addition to this website, we would also like to use this particular YouTube channel to give teams the opportunity to showcase some of their developments in short videos that either show the robot models or the developments they're making on their software or tools. If you're interested in contributing such a short video, please contact the technical committee and we are happy to assist you with that. Now for the upcoming developments, today we are releasing the third and final call for participation. There are not any substantial updates in the content. This is just a final reminder that the submission is due on next Monday. On April 12th, which is next Monday, um, we have a submission deadline. And this is just a reminder that you really only need to submit a few details on your team. There is no robot model required and no other application material for this April 12th deadline. The submission system is already open, so you can go ahead and submit those details right away if you want. And in addition, we will also release an updated version of the robot model specifications on April 12th. April 19th, we'll then release the final rulebook and an updated version of the API specifications and a second update of the server infrastructure requirements, as I just said. And then on April 23rd, the teams need to submit the first version of their robot models, also in the submission system for the RoboCup Humanoid League. 
With Cyberbotics, we are at the moment working on the auto referee system as well as on updating the game controller to be able to handle all the input from the auto referee. If you're interested in following this development more closely or you see any issues with the auto referee development or the game controller development, you're welcome to check out and um, keep monitoring the respective repositories the Cyberbotics repository for the auto referee development and our technical committee GitHub for the game controller developments. This is all that I have for today. Um, thanks again for watching. Come to our office hours tomorrow if you have any questions or updates. And you can also always engage with us on the forum. Thanks for this week and I'll see you next week.